Righty ho, folks. Good afternoon. And welcome back to the land of so the land of Swordland. The land of Swordland. Too many lands there. Anyway, hope you're all having a good day so far. I'm Rusta. Welcome, welcome. First dibs. First in there. I like it. <coughs> High drama. It was high drama. Hopefully today's stream will be less drama, but I can't see it getting any any less dramatic than it currently is. It might get. It might be a slight bit less, but there's still going to be a degree of drama. I suspect. Catherine, good afternoon. It's always strange not saying good evening. I don't class half past five on a lovely sunny. You can see my face is lit up. It's a lovely blue sky. Sun is still shining. Fifteen degrees spring day. I don't class this as evening just yet. It's afternoon. If this was winter, it'd be, it'd be night time, but it's not. It's daylight. It feels like it's afternoon. <sighs> good evening, uh, Cham. Good evening, Ollie. My work uh, work today was, was all right. It was steady away, as usual. Very steady. Tomorrow, I'm working from home, so I've got a couple of things to do, which will take me uh, a good three or four hours, which I'm happy about because I want some. I want something to bloody do. So my new trainee start in on the 29th of April, and then I'll be, as I said before, I said then then I'll be busy, snowed under perhaps. And I'll be moaning that oh, I'm overworked. <coughs> yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. We had thunder and lightning and hail all day. It's been glorious sunshine here all day, which is kind of strange for the, for the north. It's been a lovely day, and I've not really been outside to enjoy it. I've, I've admired it from inside. <sighs> I'm playing football. I ain't got time to be walking around exercising. Just one lot of exercise a day is more than enough. Thank you. Right. Anyway, so uh, I've got I've got to until about quarter past seven this evening. Football's at eight, but I'm picking somebody up before I go to football. So I have to be setting off a little bit earlier than I usually would. So uh, quarter past seven, twenty past is the very latest that I can end the stream to get changed and get moving. But uh, oh, you had the same in London. So it makes a change. That uh, down down there, it's uh, the weather's a bit more grim than up here. It's com usually the other way around. So uh, ha look at us, look at us. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, we all know what happened in the last session, and if you don't know, well, it's tough. I'm not going to catch you up, all right? It's your own fault. Uh, but, yeah, we uh, ended up uh, switching the growth curve or the growth line from highly positive and happy days of the economy is looking marvellous to negative. And why did that happen? Because we had a gun held to our head by Gloria Tory and her cronies. We don't want this. We don't want that. You can change that. You can change this if you want us to vote for the new unplanned, unannounced constitutional change that you made. I mean, come on, Gloria. We're trying to stamp out discrimination in the country. Should be on board with that, shouldn't you, really? But anyway, uh, yeah, so we suffered a little bit, and we went to the constitutional vote. No, oh, yeah, after that, of course, then bloody what's-his-face came knocking. Piff Ghibli, the friends, friends Richter, came knocking. Uh, he had his own demands. Well, at that point, we'd lost the will to live. So it's like, friends, whatever you're going to ask for, you're going to get at this point. So just, you know, want me, want uh, to look after my kids, take them off my hands if you want. You know, take my personal wealth with you uh, and my house. Why don't you just take it all? Yeah, take all of it, friends. Because right now, I couldn't care less. I'm, oh, I'm busy. Uh, I'm stressed. Just get out of my office. That's what I felt like saying. Uh, but we, 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 we were a bit more diplomatic than that. And he went on his merry way. Aha, the Piff Trip can claim all the glory for the constitutional reform. My own party members, in the newspapers at least, stated that they hated my guts. And we scraped through after high drama in the, in the assembly. Stark with Sol himself hobbled in. And we got through by a single vote. It's a little laggy. It shouldn't be laggy. There's no drop frames. The connection is fluctuating a little bit, but not below what it should be. I'm telling you, 
this has already happened twice now, ever since I told Virgin that I was leaving. I bet now they've pulled the plug, ah, you can have the slow speeds now. He's going, we don't need to keep him sweet anymore, let's give him the crap service. No, it should be fine, there's no drop frames man, so I think it, I think it's fine. Uh, speaking of which, my new internet um, is arriving next Monday. I say arriving, it's getting installed. If all goes smoothly, if they turn up and say, oh, this is a big job, because I've never had uh, City Fibre Cable to my premises, so they're going to have to do some digging to get it to the house for a start. And then when it gets to the house, they have to take it from the connection point outside to my bedroom. Remember the party stream? They're taking it here. <laughs> not taking it downstairs where it's easy. Oh, you can just use the, the wireless router with it. No, you're not. No, I don't want to use the wireless router, thank you. I want the box right here where I specify. So when it comes here, so yeah, it's going to get installed next Monday. It's a bit of disruption, but hopefully by next Monday, I'll have all the glorious one gigabyte upload speed that I've been that I've been dreaming about for the past eighteen months. Because I've heard I heard about the fact that City Fiber were doing mirrored download and uploads when it first came into the country, and some cities were the first to get it. Um, and Leeds had to wait and 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 eventually they started installing it in our area about six months ago to eight months ago I think it might have been now uh, and I, it was really interesting because it started I, when I first spotted them they were like at my friend's area which is about half a mile up that way and I'm like oh interesting and then it, I, I followed them you know on a on a kind of weekly basis as they were making their way closer and closer and closer until they got here and I was like oh hey, hey happy days so yes, we shall see. So I'm hoping to uh, at some point, maybe Tuesday, um, get a couple of kind of one hour and a half recorded LP sessions of whatever game, Baldur's Gate Three, this Kingdom of Reezy, whatever I'm playing at the time. Just a bit too early for Three Kingdoms just yet. I haven't started my research yet, by the way. Uh, um, some long. Uh, 1440p videos uh, just to simply see uh, how quick uh, they upload to YouTube uh, but that, so we'll see we shall see so I've got quicker rendering now because of the new computer that I got which is not new anymore because it's was it three years old now two and a half, two May I got it May for my birthday I think it might be coming up to three I think I got it 2021 I did get it 2021 because it was after after the old C word. So it's coming up to three years old. Uh, I have exactly two weeks. Oof. Oh, it's a, yeah, it's a bit sooner than I anticipated. Can we put it back for, for until uh, till the summer, perhaps? Do you reckon that'll go down well? I could technically start it and do an introductory session and then leave that as the start and then leave it a month after that. That's a good idea. Wait your whistle a bit and then I'll see you in a month's time after that. Just give you an introduction. Here's who I'm playing as, eventually. Here's your first video. It's, I told you it's coming, didn't I? There's no gameplay, of course. Oh. <laughs> the mechanics have messed up. Yeah, if I go quiet for, for three or four weeks, or I'm on my Discord on my phone, oh, guys, tragedy struck. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm still playing as that bandit guy. Yeah, of course I am. I don't. When it comes to Total World games, I like to start A with a small character or small land. So any of the people I've got like 15 set settlements and provinces or whatever, command commanderies or whatever they're called in the game. Uh, I'm not interested. I want to start as small as possible, build my way up. And that guy was located right on the edge of the map. And I thought that's a perfect starting spot for me. And I like the guy's kind of story, kind of a bandit king that rose, that, that we hopefully, with some competent gameplay, rise to rule them all. It's quite a nice story. So yeah, I am I am looking to do that. Um, walking the dog in torrential rain. Oh dear. Well, welcome. Hope you're dried off. Hope you're nice and warm now. Get yourself a hot drink. Sit back, relax. Listen to me witter on for the next hour or two be fine an hour and a half actually so let's get cracking because you know it's time times are ticking um 
his pragmatic style of play is quite fun. Oh, I'm I am the master of pragmatism when it comes, especially at work. It's, like, it's my get out of jail free card. Whenever you do something that's against the the norm, or you do something that's slightly outside the guidance, it's like, look, I am taking a pragmatic approach to the situation. I know what the guidance says, but on this occasion, I'm being pragmatic. So we'll do it this way. For the benefits of time saving efficiency savings and all the rest of it you do you do or I I do you do I do you do uh, I, I don't think it was called you do that's it that's the didn't survive long oh no, that's not a good sign maybe I'm because I think it was badged as a very hard start so maybe I'm biting off more than I could chew because I don't know nothing about the game Hey, if we fail, it'll be the first Total War campaign we've ever failed. So, so it could be good. Zhang Yan. Oh, is that the character? I don't know. I can't remember. I can't remember the name. Right, anyway. it Was was it like the Black Mountains or something? The Black, Black Mountain Clan or Black Mountains? Have I got, have I got that right? I seem to recall it was a B, a B word. I, I don't know. Bearing in mind, I loaded the game up. One random. Oh, it was after the. I'm sure it was after the end of the series of. What was the game called? The rat game. The game with the rats. Black. It was Black Mountain. You see, my memory is really good with certain things. Really good. Because I literally loaded that game up. Uh, found him. Uh, how many months ago was that now? It was after the Plague Tale Requiem stream finished early, so I loaded that up as a bit of a bonus. Found that guy. Random person. Never heard of him before. And I still remembered. So you see, I am invested. There you go. And I swear to God, I haven't loaded the game up since then to to, 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 to look or do anything. I, I've just remembered it from that one little session that I loaded up. Anyway, let's carry on. Right, read the report. Massive protests. The Flying Swallow. That's, that's a nice little moniker. Oh, you see, you're all filling this, filtering this information to me. To get me, to get the juices flowing, aren't you? The Thief King. Oh, here we go. Here we go. You're all trying to get me into the spirit now. Mm. God of War. I got God of War on my PlayStation 5 for free. Like, you know, PlayStation Plus, they do three games occasionally, and you can download them for free. And that was one of the games that was downloadable, and I got it for free. And my PlayStation has sat downstairs. In a little secret hiding place where I put my PlayStation when I go on holiday, just in case we get burgled. Uh, uh, I put all my all my high value items in a particular place, which is very difficult to find. And um, ever since then, this was two and a half years ago now. It hasn't been seen since. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be as dusty as hell. So yeah, uh, I have that game somewhere, and um, yeah, maybe I'll get onto playing it at some point. Maybe I'll get my PlayStation out at some point. Probably when GTA 6 comes out, I'll I'll remove my PlayStation. In I might film it on my phone and put it on YouTube like an unboxing, but like a you know, bring it out. Oh no, because I see where my place is. I can't show you that. Uh, bring it out. Blow all the dust off, dust flying in the air, uh, and plug it all up to play Grand Theft Auto 6. And I press the power button, and because it's been that unused, that dusty, it won't work. And I'll be furious. <laughs> Black Mountain Guy showed up once in the Three Kingdoms TV show to harass the main character on the road for 10 minutes before getting dealt with. <laughs> well, I'll have a Black Mountain version. Won't be getting dealt with, hopefully. He'll be doing the dealing. Oh, no. Stop showing me statistics. I don't need to see the stats and traits just now. You you were doing so well until that, but you were drawing me in with the, the, the monikers and the, the potential storyline that we could have, and then you threw stats at me, and it's like, oh, my God. It's one of the reasons why I haven't played the game just yet, because I heard it was quite a steep learning curve, actually. Uh you know me when it comes to games with steep learning curves. I kind of put them off and put them off until I can be bothered to do the research. Look at, look at, uh, uh, what's the game called? Crusader Kings. I put that off for a little while. 
Not as long as this, I don't think, but I still put it off. I'm like, oh, this game's very complicated. Oh, no. And then it became my favourite game of all time. Pretty much. Well, strategy, that is. Anyway, last thing I talked to you about before then I could crack on. I've got my new mouse today. Look at that. Oh, my, I'm going a bit dark. I might have to change my settings eventually. Uh, it's a Logitech thingy. Look at that. It's just a mouse, isn't it, really? Uh, <clears throat> but it's very responsive. I like the rubber feet. It glides over my desk nice and smoothly. The clicks are a little bit louder than my old mouse, but they're not too loud. And unlike the mouse that I got last time, they have... It has the old uh, shortcut buttons on the side with the thumb there. You can see the side buttons, which are, are always set up to go back and forwards. So when you're browsing the internet, rather than having to click the damn back button, uh, I can just click the, the, the side shortcut keys here. My mouse... Oh, I missed those from my... Um, from the other mouse that I had, wired one from about three years ago. So I've got those back now. So every yeah, this, the DPI is perfect. I've got it all set up nicely, gliding, pointing and clicking. Oh, I'm very happy. Bloody 40 pound, it's the most I've ever paid for a mouse. I, I know that much. Right, anyway, let's go. Uh, constitutional changes passed by the assembly. The Grand National Assembly of Swordland on Friday approved the amendments to the Constitution that was proposed by the United Swordland Party. I officially announce the approval of the constitutional amendments, said Gloria Tory, after the proposal was passed in a public session. Oh, the public were present. You're telling me the public had to witness all of that drama too? We weren't told about this in the game when I was sat there yelling at my vice president to shut the hell up. I might have been a bit more professional than I, had I realised. They slipped that in, didn't they? We should watch the show Nirvana in Fire to get in the mood. For Three Kingdoms when the time comes. Chinese Game of Thrones. More detail but better. You'll love the music. Nirvana in Fire. I better start this evening then, aren't I really? Because I need to be getting in the mood right now. <laughs> I've got two weeks apparently. Holy hell. Right. Let me quickly change my camera settings because I think the, it's not going to get any brighter now. I think it's only going to get darker. So let me just uh, put a bit more extra lighting on the situation. There we go. That'll do. Should last us for another half an hour or so. It's only trouble with variable light. It's the only issue. But I don't want to put my blinds down today. I thought I want to embrace the brightness. Right, 167 voted in favour, surpassing the 166 threshold by only one vote. One member uh, abstained. Tarquin Sol came, yes, very good. Next week, on Friday, the Supreme Court will also vote on the amendments, ultimately deciding if the changes will be implemented or not. The session was televised as well. It's 19, it's 1940s. I mean, they had, no, they had TV back then, but there ain't many people watching it, let's be honest, if that was the case. Oh, 1,000 people. We're a poor country. Not by the time I've finished, hopefully, but we're a... Is it the 50s? Oh, oh, I stand corrected. Was there suddenly a TV boom in the 50s? <laughs> I jest. Right, Swordland today. Reigns uh, reforms win over the assembly. Oh, I like how that's badged. I like, I like, I like this paper. Uh, today marked the biggest win of Anton Rain's term as the Assembly approved his proposal for reforming the Swordish Constitution. I mean, they are still badging it as my reforms and the USP's reforms, not the Piffjibs reforms. No matter what Friends Richter wanted, papers are still saying it as it is correctly. The surprise presence of Tarquin Sol at the proceedings shifted the required number of votes from 166 to a two-thirds majority. Still, Reign's new amendments passed with flying colours. Flying colours? That's... <laughs> okay, that's one way to put it. I don't think that... I didn't see many flying, Fly... much flying, or I didn't see many colours either. Just, just black and white, grey, drab, miserable, forlorn, lost. Okay, so only the Supreme Court remain. We're hopeful that they too will rule in Reign's favour. So do I. Right, Grand National Assembly passes reforms. WPB congratulates. 
Okay, the Workers' Party of Broody extends its heartfelt congratulations to President Anton Rain on the successful passage of the reform proposal, which included their highly sought changes to Article 6 and 7. This landmark achievement marks a historic moment for Swordland. It's now up to the Supreme Court, however. The WPB called the Supreme Court to approve the reforms and not going against the will of the people, further damaging the democratic values of Swordland. The leaders also commended their collaborative efforts of all the parties involved, apart from the NFP, of course. Uh, Richter congratulates President. Aligning with Richter and his party was key to the amount of... Well, it was key, actually. That, that is correct, actually. We'll give you that one. That's, that's of the Shaven Times. This is, this is of course... I'm sure that the Shaven Times is the... Uh, the it's bloody glasses. I'm sure that the Shaven Times must be um, my, Mr. Cronty's uh, paper. It's always positive, isn't it? The radical is always negative, though. Constitution passes the assembly. Count us surprised. Tickle me pink. In spite of every opposition and a special appearance from the old from old, from old man Tarquinson himself, President Rain actually managed to get these constitutional reforms passed the assembly. We've been advocating for change to Saul's dusty constitution. For, I love some of the words these guys use. So many, you know, dust, the amount of adjectives that were so scathing in the last report. Is it this one? Yeah, this one here. Oh, the, the, you just read it. Grotesque. Vicious. Uh, yeah. Dusty constitution. Well, it's doubtful the changes Rain is advocating are the same as those we have in mind. Even if Rain decided to come down on the side of democracy and fairness, getting a proposal like this past Gloria Tory's gavel must have required a great deal of compromise. And getting the approval for the Supreme Court will require it. Well, actually, do you know what? For a change, you're actually quite correct. <laughs> But even a ticking clock is right twice a day. Good job we did not yell. Imagine listening on the radio to hear the president shouting like a loon. I know. That would have been quite bad. But we maintained a degree of professionalism. A degree. The hat was buckled, the glasses were steamed. The tie was even hanging out of the shirt for a show. Oh, excuse me. Even poor old Peter felt our wrath, but... We just kept on the knife edge. Didn't tip over. Just, just pushed us to the limit. It was Peter's fault. He pushed me. Poor for Peter. I'd have been all right. With his usual flipping, goofish manner. But it came round when we, when we agreed to go for a drink. What a surprise. When all the drama had finished. Let's go for a drink, Peter. Oh, I, I, I was waiting for you to say that. Of course you were. And what's next? What else do you want me to say? Hey, I've got you a nice lady to go into the toilets with next as well. Because that's the kind of thing you also do, Peter. I know you too well. Massive protests against Ijal's arrest. Governor Bronn has issued a report stating that massive protests and riots have erupted in the city of Dare. Following the arrest of Mr Ijal, the leader of the WPB. Uh, protests have caused significant damage to public property and pose a threat to public safety. Governor Bronn has assured that necessary measures, probably illegal, will be taken, or at least against basic human rights, uh, restore order and bring those responsible to justice. He has also urged citizens to remain calm and cooperate, uh, cooperate with law enforcement officials to maintain peace and stability in the region. The sooner we get him out of there, the better, but it's a bit more tricky now because we've had to cease our plans to do that thing with Berger that we were going to do. What were we going to do? We were going to do make it a semi-autonomous zone. Th those plans had to be stopped because of this compromise. So now we have to f find a new tact. The new tact I'm hoping is going to be what my original tact was going to be, is just bring them in as a regular state within the country like every other state. I know they've got their issues and they've got their history and yes, they're a little bit kind of different to the others in terms of what's happened but ultimately in time let's integrate them yeah our border posts are finished they finished in the last uh, session I don't know if we get anything bonus out of that or anything that's worth clicking into uh, they've been reinforced I don't think it'll be enough if that one million strong Rumberg army comes marching through but hey we can say we tried meeting on the results of the assembly vote okay let's go Lucian, Peter and I convened on the massive balcony of the palace 
It was nice to catch a breeze in the increasing summer heat. Both, oh, now the sun's come back out again. My face is like a, an aura. Uh, both had grins on their faces, but Peter's got larger as he kept recounting our success in the assembly. Fellas, the first obstacle has been cleared. Congratulations to all of us. Yes. <clears throat> I don't want to be too negative. I mean, this obviously is our next step, but we all know that. So, you know, great job, gentlemen, great job. You know, if we never got past this first step, we wouldn't even be having to, co we, wouldn't, we wouldn't even have to contemplate the second. So, yeah, fair dues. Peter leaned on the balcony railing. Careful, Peter. I've heard the many an incident with balconies, people slipping and falling over them. You know, arrows peppering into passing carriages. Oh, it's the wrong game, sorry. <laughs> what about Tarquin Saul? Did you see him again? As far as I know, he's still staying in Hallsword, but hasn't cared to pay his respects to President Rain yet. What the hell was that about, anyway? Him appearing out of nowhere. Hmm. What was his intention? Perfectly normal. It's not perfectly normal, is it? Come on. Zeke, uh, I think he has come to make a statement. Is he a threat? Of course he's still a threat. Old gawker, gawking hawker here, uh, Chief Justice, is going to... Who knows what they're going to be planning? Yeah. Clearly easy to make a statement, but uh, thankfully we still won the vote. But all is not bright and rosy just yet. I'm sorry that we failed to warn you he would be attending, Mr. President. We should have been informed about his arrival. Uh, what Lucian said, we apologise. It's fine, I... I didn't expect to hear it from my driver, but I shall let that slide. <laughs> What's that rule? If I kind of say something and something similar comes along? No, I don't want to scold them. It's fine. It's fine, it's fine. It worked out in the end. I'll gloss over the incompetence of my briefs. We were definitely thinking the bottom one, though. We kept it in. We managed to keep it in. Uh, in a situation such as this, I would have expected Carl to report it to me. But it's no excuse. We should have done our own research. Do you know what? I did want to say it. And this is a bit less scathing. So, we're going to say it now. Yes, perhaps you should, actually. I mean, Sergei did know about it, after all. How did he flip and find out? Exactly, Peter. Don't answer a question with a question. I hope you're not hiding anything from me. <laughs> oh. Whoa. Yes, well, do you know what? It's fine, it doesn't matter now anyway. What's done is done. Oh, I guess not. In any case, I will conduct proper investigations into this. We should know every hidden old guard member who is working with Sol. But for now, let's move on. Uh, yeah, we have the first hurdle cleared, but now we have the council of grumpy old men in our way. I have to say, that's a fitting description for the call. But unfortunately for us, they are more than that. They're our largest obstacle yet. Also, you are forgetting about Mrs. Edmonds. They're not all grumpy old men. Yes, and let's not forget our key to all of this, Mrs. Morgner. She's technically a member too. Wait, did you just, did you just call Nia a grumpy old woman? <laughs> he always cracks jokes at the wrong moments, does old Peter, doesn't he? 
You know, like that friend that just always continually puts his foot in it. Every time. If the sound or anything happens to the sound, just be, let me know because my headset is plugged in as you can see here and it keeps disconnecting. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> about the court. Yes, thank you, Peter. Mrs. Morgner has been helping out with the lobbying of the court. She has been speaking with Mrs. Edmonds, and we believe she's our key figure on the inside. Our lobbying efforts are continuing positively, but they have yet to yield concrete results. It will ultimately be up to Mrs. Morgner and you to persuade the justices, sir. Oh, so we've got meetings with justices now. Oh, happy days. Oh, bloody hell. And we already have Nia inside the court. That's one vote out of 11. Has she managed to lobby anyone else? Lucian? She has the ears of Justices Dalton and Merton, says Peter. So we could assume that we have their support as well. So that gives us three votes to start with. I'm not trying to be pessimistic, but Mrs. Morgner cannot do this alone. Let's not forget about Mr. Hawker and his loyalists. We'll still need to reach out to the old guard and the moderates in order to reach six votes. Ooh. Do you think we can do it? We've come this far. Anything is possible. If we cannot go to Mrs. Edwin's centrists, we will have no choice but to reach out to the old guard. Hey, we won the goat comfortably. I'm sure that counts for something. Define comfortable, Peter. Define comfortable. Pressure on the court? I don't think there's much. But there's a little bit, but I'm, Hawker will do as Hawker will do. The court still sees us as a threat, especially now that we're moving, removing the term sword from the Constitution. I'll be honest, it will be extremely difficult to persuade enough justices. Well, Lucian, we never expected this to be easy. And quite frankly, nothing has changed. In fact, we're a step closer, if anything, if we want to be optimistic. Yeah, that's true, sir. In any case, we shall start with our best bet. I already asked Nia to arrange a meeting with Mrs. Edmonds. She's willing to speak with you. Hmm. That's a good start. Thank you, Peter. Something useful there. If she's willing to talk, she's willing to cooperate. I'm sure you'll convince her. Lucian suddenly turned around and pointed at the side of uh, entrance, looking up. Pointed at the side entrance to the balcony. Look who's coming. Is it Sol? Oh, it's Richter. He suddenly walked up to us with a smile on his face. <clears throat> Afternoon, gentlemen. How are you all doing? Afternoon, Mr. Richter. Plant the barbecue. Busy as always, Mr. Richter. How about you? Ah, oh, the same goes for me, Mr. President. These are some busy days indeed. Yes, especially after that mutual victory. We should thank you for your efforts, Mr. Richter. You were of tremendous assistance. <laughs> yeah, public balcony. Seems like we are. Friends bowed his head slightly in response. I'm looking forward to having many more cooperations between us, and victories. I wish you good luck with the Supreme Court. I have conversed with Mrs. Morgner and Justice Zizek. We have at least two justices supporting the proposal. We must be united if we want to break them. We must also be seen as united more than ever. Therefore, I'd like to propose a proper alliance for the next elections. A more in-depth collaboration throughout the rest of the current term. Define proper alliance. Ooh, this seems quite an extreme measure. But to be honest with you, <laughs> I am already not counting on getting uh, re-elected anyway at this point. <sighs> it's 
strength in numbers and all that. And their ideals are quite aligned with our ideals, as a president at least. So, do you know what, Mr. Richter? I think a proper alliance is not a bad, not a bad thing. At least, uh, perhaps I might have some friends, even if my own party want me to fall on my sword. Ah, it would surely put pressure on the old guard. Such a grand coalition has never happened in Sordan before. We should show people that our parties can work together. That civility and cooperation is possible. Oh. It would surely have a great symbolic meaning, says Peter. Especially if we can change the constitution. I'll reach out to you soon about it. We must start organising and announce it as soon as possible. Friends reached down at his pocket, fumbled with a handkerchief and wiped the sweat off his forehead. Anyway, I'll leave you three to it. We should catch up soon. Uh, I'd rather get back inside now. The sun is getting intense. He went back to the door and left the balcony. Well, that was interesting. It wasn't enough that you got all the credit for the reforms and now we're joining hands, huh? You know what? In for a penny, in for a pound. I mean, to be fair, we are not sure how deep we'll dive. But that's, that's actually quite negative, and I'm actually probably quite behind this. So do you know what? Yeah, Swordland wants democracy. We're opening the door to said democracy, all right? A coalition government could make things much more difficult for us, though. Peter is not entirely wrong. Entirely? What is that supposed to mean? There's nothing right. A coalition government with the PFJP can mean a lot of things, but one thing is for sure. Once Mr. Richter enters our government, it will be hard to get him to leave. We should be careful, sir. Yes, people don't tend to do things for the greater good, I gather here. There's going to be some personal gain involved in his decision making, but hey. As I said, I've already resorted to the fact that we're getting, we're going to be gone by the time we finished the next election. So do you know what? We're going all gusto here with what we want to do. Forget these political games and pleasing that person and pleasing the other person. From now on, we do what we want to do, for the most part at least. We'll see what happens. I think it's a good time to conclude our little meeting, sir. There's a tap on my shoulder. Olivia Suno had joined us on the balcony. Pardon the interruption, gentlemen. Mr. President, David Wishy is calling about the upcoming foreign policy meeting. Uh, tell him I'll be right there. Meetings after meetings. They don't stop just because we've got one victory, do they? I will, sir. She turned to leave the balcony and then back to us. Congratulations on the victory, Mr. Rain. Peter? She looked Peter in the eye as she said this and ignored Lucian altogether. Peter's eyes followed her as she walked out. I'm getting pretty hot out here. <laughs> Okay, we're finished. You be you both may go now. All right, gentlemen. See you later. They both left. God damn it, Peter. <laughs> right, Jam. I haven't ignored your question. I just want to end that meeting. Uh, position are we in the table for today? Uh, well, for table for footy. So there's three tables, right? There's three tables. I play on a Tuesday. I play on a Thursday. I play on a Sunday. Let's take the Sunday League out, first of all. The Sunday League, um, yeah, I haven't counted, but I'd say over the past 15 seasons or so, we've won it 13 times. Uh, there's only two seasons I can recount for a long time that we haven't won it. Um, and we're top. Seven wins out of seven this season, so far. So, looking pretty good. Looking pretty spiffing on Sunday. Tuesday, which is today's uh, football, is a bit strange because 
We don't have a reg we have a regular team, but our regular team is never available on a Tuesday, it seems. So we just get ringers in and people that just want to play and we're sometimes even struggling and we're getting people to play for us that just happen to be in the building at the time. Uh, and so uh, we, I think, I don't know actually, because we've had so many cancellations on a Tuesday uh, since the season started that I have no clue how many games we're supposed to have played. And because this league is slightly run by uh, the centre where we play and not run by the man that runs the Thursday and Sunday league who has a website, I don't know where we are at the table today because I never know because there's no website to check. So I just turn up and play on a Tuesday. We won it last season. I think we might be in about fourth, third this season. We've lost a couple of games on a Tuesday so far. Then I turn to Thursday, which is the biggest catastrophe known to man. Uh, last season, uh, we won it for the first time. I've, I've, play, I've been playing with this team on a Thursday, which is the team I, uh, that I play for on a Sunday. It's a different team, but it's the same name run by the same person. So it's a slightly different team. But it's, three of us that play on a Sunday that play on the Thursday as well with some additional extras uh, and I don't forget I joined this team from the team that I used to play for uh, that I started playing for in 20, uh, for, uh, 40, 2014 I'd played with them for like five years uh, and we won titles with them and we, we were doing really well and then the team went a bit to disarray and then they were getting really violent on the pitch and I left after the season after that to join this team so twice we came very close to winning the title on a Thursday, threw it away on the last game of the season, the, the first season that I joined them. The second season, um, we were doing really well and then we just fell away at the halfway point. The third season, which was uh, the season after that, we were top for a while and then we ended up uh, finishing, I think, third. And then there was last season where we finally won it. I was like, oh, finally, I've not won the Thursday title with any team for a, a good five seasons, so it's been a little while. So really pleased, really happy. Uh, finally won it. Very, t very tough uh, league is the Thursday league. Very tough indeed. Lots of great teams in there. And then this season, we're just over halfway through, and we're rock bottom. <laughs> Completely rooted at the bottom of the table. It's been a car crash of a season. And we're now under threat of relegation, which is completely alien to me. Oh, it's awful. Absolutely. I actually just turn up on a Thursday like, oh, can we be bothered to play here? Are we going to pull our shit together? Anyway, so that's the situation of the football at the moment. Bit of a mixed bag, really. Because last season... On all of the seasons finished at the same time, which is very rare for a start. We won the Tuesday League and we won the Tuesday Cup. We won the Thursday League, came runner-up in the Thursday Cup, lost on pen lost in the final. We won the Sunday League and won the Sunday Cup. Three, three seasons all finishing at the same time and we won everything apart from one cup. The season, it was, it was, you know, back in the last year when it all was happening, around, I think it was when, must have been around about September, October time. Uh, I don't think I've ever experienced such, uh, such positivity uh, in terms of everything coming together so nicely across three different uh, leagues. Uh, and then we come to this, oh, it's just absolute uh, nosedived. But anyway, we keep plugging on. Right, what's this? We've got Richter. Congratulates vote results. Okay, very good, very good. We know that. Rumberg whistleblower. Oh, we read about this in the last session. Rumberg whistleblower managed to escape Rumberg, was heading to Swordland. Want to heighten tensions with the big bad enemy? Oh, let's see what we can do about it, shall we? A whistleblower from the Rumberg Security Bureau has escaped to Swordland by crossing the border and turned himself to the authorities in Estord. Agent Chelston Hailstone has promised to reveal extremely sensitive information about the development of a weapons program. We can give refuge to him and risk antagonizing Rumberg or send him back. This is an interesting development because we are not 
equipped to deal with Rumberg. So antagonizing them, for certain, if we grant him asylum, is not going to go down too well. Now he's given us sensitive information about a weapons program. Are we going to be able to do anything about that information or with that information to protect ourselves from a Rumberg invasion? I think antagonizing him by keeping him is gonna be worse. I think we need to placate them as much as possible. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, Beatrice is a lunatic and she's a conquering lunatic, so perhaps even if we were to send him back she wouldn't give a crap. She'd still do what she wants to do. Juicy intelligence. Obviously the right thing to do is to grant him asylum. That's the correct thing to do. And I did say I was going to do what I felt was right, regardless of politics. But this is kind of not really politics. This is the country we're talking about here. This is like, if this goes wrong, Rumberg could invade. That's something that I would really not want to happen. Can it be used as a bargaining chip? Maybe. I don't think I could probably live with myself if I sent him back and he was killed, to be honest. Regardless of the sensitive weapon situation. That report that we read about this whole situation was like, you know, you'll do the right thing, Swordland, won't you? That's the tone of the, was, of the document, wasn't it? You'll do the right thing. Of course we will. And the right thing is to grant him asylum. Oh, I clicked it, and then the mouse didn't register it. I'm just getting to grips with the fingering of, of the mouse. Slip of the Freud in there. Um, add it to the comedy clips with all the other slips I make. Uh, grant asylum is the right thing to do. But now that I clicked it and it didn't register, I'm thinking, is somebody telling me something here? Divine intervention. They said, actually, no, that's the wrong thing to do. No, we'll try clicking it a second time. If it happens again, then I'm definitely taking it as a sign. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, God. Whistleblower in safe house. We secretly transferred him to a... We could always lie. Yeah, he never made it here. Queen Beatrice, I'm not seeing either air of him. Who is he? What's his name again? Said Ailstone. Don't, I don't recall ever of a hailstorm in my reports, I'm afraid. Yeah, he must have he must have been killed when on the way. It's a very dangerous land we live in. Very dangerous times. It's a shame, isn't it? Perimeter guarded by special forces units to ensure no escape or rescue attempt can be conducted by Rumberg Intelligence. He has been interrogated thoroughly. <laughs> we grant you asylum. Please sit in this chair. What are you doing to me? Oh, we are granting you asylum, sir. We didn't say what the asylum entailed. <laughs> now open wide. <laughs> What's the bloody terrorist, you know, Queenie? <laughs> might have, might have, might have mistook him for a swordish fellow and killed him. <laughs> you know, with those weapons that you uh, <laughs> give to them. Call it irony. God, it's time to get a new mouse. <laughs> Uh, send it back. I think it's faulty. Right, here we go. We've got some uh, news here. Geopil Swordland accepts... Why are you publishing that in a paper? Who is responsible for this? Oh, no, you idiots. Oh, my God. Who has done this? <laughs> what did we say? Keep it hush. Geopolitico! Dun dun dun! Breaking news, folks! Oh my god! Well, there goes that plan! <laughs> I can't believe it! Invitation to the movie premiere! What flipping movie premiere? The movie premiere of the whole debacle of the Supreme Court? Yes, we thought it would be an Oscar worthy movie. The whole drama of it all, sir. The movie was made within a week. 
which movie is this? I've been invited to an exclusive preview of Alfred, Alfred Cheerbook's new film, The Morning Shall Come. Is that supposed to be Alfred Hitchcock, by the way? <laughs> Chaos in the Court. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, comedy at its finest. Okay, The Morning Shall Come. Although I wasn't in much of a movie-going mood, it would have been unpresidential of me not to attend. With this massive budget and Kerbuck's directional cachet, this drama was set to be a milestone for Swordland's burgeoning film scene. Personally, though, I was just looking forward to spending some time with my family. Got to say, we've not seen our family for a little while. It was very hot and sunny as Sergei drove us to the old capital. The film was to be screened at the historic cinema Anglais de Elroy, the very first cinema in Swordland. I gazed at the vast plains between Horsord and Erleroy as we drove on the H1. Sergei had maxed out the air conditioning to keep the Cadilla comfortable. Frank fidgeted with his tie as he stared out of the window. What's <clears throat> wrong, Frank? Since when do you care what's happening in my life? Oh, I did say we've not seen him for a little while. Now, now, come on. You know I'll support you whether you pass or fail these exams. There's no need to be grumpy. What an honour, your highness. Frank, don't talk to your father that way. He's been working so hard for this country. <laughs> you're, you're hurting me, Frank. <laughs> don't make me angry, Frank. I don't like any of these options. I don't want to ignore him either. Oh, these, I don't like any of these. Ah, uh, don't make me... Okay, we're going to... Okay. Come on now, Frank. These are hurtful comments. I am trying my hardest here. Got a few plates to juggle and all that. Frank turned his head away to look outside the window. Typical teenage boys. I turned to Dina. Don't you start, Dina. Otherwise, it's game over. This this car is turning back round. Sergey, turn us around. Sweetie, excited for the movie, sweetie. Dina nodded happily. What about you, Papa? You won something, right? You should smile and keep doing your best, even if you lose. You see, that's the spirit. <laughs> ah. Yeah, that's my girl. That's my little sweetie. Thank you. <sighs> right, now. No more politics talk. Isn't that right, Monica? Of course. Let's just focus on having a nice time at the movies. Oh, she's a bit off today. What's wrong? Monica folded her arms. We drove on in silence. Sergey rolled down the soundproof glass. Sir, we are about to enter Erleroy. We'll be at the cinema in a few minutes. Thanks, Sergey. As usual. Any more intelligence for me, Sergey? That my incompetent team haven't. So no more politics. Sorry about that, Sergey. Sorry about that. Turn around. Off you go. I took a brief look outside as Sergey rolled the soundproof glass up again. I could see the many towers of Erleroy rising over what was left of the old city walls. Sergey knocked on the glass and gestured forwards. You saw attending the movie as well. <laughs> I'm Bristol only having the same uh, thoughts. We were at the main square of Erleroy and the historic cinema Angli, the cinema of angels, was right in front of us. Is this the place? Yeah. There's an old Baroque style corner building with walls that look like marble from a distance. There were exquisite ornaments on each side of every window. Sergei pulled the car to the entrance of the building, which was lit by vivid neon stripes in many colours. Come on, let's get out. Sergei opened the door and we were, uh, exited onto the red carpet. We were just about to enter the building when a journalist managed to block the path. Oh. Journalists aren't top of my list. They never usually are, but when a paper has just printed that crap, which was true, uh, Journalists really should not be crossing my path on my day or, or evening off. 
Mr. President, Mr. President. Your constitutional reforms made it through the assembly. How do you feel about their chances with the Supreme Court? We can't. There's no option to say, get the flipping hell out of my face, is there? That's unfortunate. I trust the justices will make the right decision. Thank you, Mr. President. And were you aware that Tarquin Saul would be present at the proceedings? Of course I was. We won't tell her <laughs> how we became aware of it. No, I had to find out for my driver. Of course I was aware. Oh, I'm always fully briefed. Before she could ask anything else, the guards ushered us inside the theatre. Thank the heavens. I can imagine her running behind us. Mr. President, I've got one more question, Mr. President. Get rid of her, will you? In contrast with the cinema's Baroque-style exterior, the inside was modern and sleek, with bare walls painted in black, red and white. The film's cast and crew were already in the foyer, with glasses of champagne in their hands. We approached the crowd and were welcomed by the producers and the event organisers. A man walked up to us with quick steps. Madam, Mr. President, it's so good to see you here. He gently bowed at Monica and shook our hands. It's an honour to meet you. I am Alfred Cheerbook. Ah, nice to meet you, Mr. Cheerbook. <laughs> I mean, that's the best pronunciation I can come up with, really. Uh, my producers told me you had expressed admiration for my work. Frank snorted. I glanced at him, and he innocently took a sip of his cola. Uh, it's very humbling to know what you've been watching and enjoying my movies. If you don't mind my asking, which one was your favourite? This one may be slightly different than my previous works. Um... The Man Who Saved the World. And the only reason why I'm picking that is because it reminds me of the song. Which was first sung... Was it first sung by Bowie or was it first sung by Nirvana? I think Bowie writ it for Nirvana and then Bowie sung it after Nirvana. I think that is that the way around? Anyway, the man is it the man who stole the world? Oh Kubrick. Oh of course. Yes. Anyway. The the song is in my head. When you wake up in Metal Gear Solid 5. And that and that song's playing. Man who stole the world. Sold the world. That was the one. That's the one. Well, this man, he saved the world. It's a sequel. <laughs> Do -do -do. Oh, I can, I, I, okay, I can kind of get the tune in my head, but I can't hum it out loud. It's one of those situations. Do -do -do. It was a good song. There's plenty of good songs in that game. He stared at me for a while as if he was trying to understand if I was joking or not. What, is that not one of his films? Is that one of, your, is that one of yours? Oh, I'm so sorry. That's by Michael Vargas, Mr. President. It beat my film The Swordish Dream for the top prize at the Benfi Festival last year. Oh. 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 So sorry about that. I'm, I'm not big on I'm not big on movies. <laughs> How can we dig ourselves out of this hole? Uh, <clears throat> Frank looked me in the eye and struggled not to laugh. We probably smirked at him as well. Grief. <laughs> the awkward tension. Ah, we'll just laugh it off. Can I have some of your cola, please, Frank? Uh, Frank, my mouth throat's a bit dry. Why don't we take our seats? It's about to start. Ah, good idea, Monica. Mr. Cheerbook, thank you for your time. Uh, <laughs> we don't think we've got time. Yeah, I watched that Unplugged show. <clears throat> Not live, clearly. Uh, about two weeks ago. Uh, that's why That's why this, That's why why this. the song... Okay, this is how I'll get to the... This is how I'll get to how it, how it came to my head. Obviously, that song is from Metal Gear Solid. I know, I know that. But only, t only two weeks ago, I came across that song, I, I kind of googled that song again because I thought, oh, I remember, and the reason why it came up was because the lead singer of Nirvana, I can't remember his name, which is probably heresy because he's a very, very famous chap, he, he killed himself uh, very young, he had mental health issues, um, and it was the anniversary of, I think it was his, I think it's the 30 year, 30 year anniversary of him, of him um, committing suicide, uh, and there was a BBC documentary released around about that time. 
So having, I, I saw I was at work and I was on my lunch break and I checked BBC News uh, and Sky Sports and all that when I'm on my lunch break. And uh, that flashed up on the BBC News. Oh, oh. oh. Because I didn't realise who he was. I've obviously heard Nirvana songs, uh, you know, there's some classics out there, but I didn't know who the lead singer is or was or the band. And I just, it was, but it was a very distinctive voice. I thought, oh, I didn't real, actually didn't realise it was him, and I didn't realise that he committed suicide so young. Um, but anyway, long story short, because of that, that song was mentioned, and this uh, unplugged show. So I, you know, I put it on YouTube. Uh, whilst I was at work, actually, it's still on lunch break. Put it in my headphones on and give it a play. I was like, "Oh yeah, this is the song that's in Metal Gear." Oh yes, and then I found Bowie's version, and then I found the Metal Gear version, and then I'm like, "Oh yes." So that's how kind of uncanny, really, isn't it? It's almost like um, Alan Wake when the game is like almost listening to what I'm doing or watching me, and then it presents things to me. And that's quite uncannily coincidental. But anyway, Carl, good evening. We're taking our seats. Oh, you you love that song. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah, it's a, it is a cracking song. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, a lot of Nirvana songs, very cool. Losing My Religion was one of my favourites. And Man on the Moon as well. Anyway, right. Lights dimmed, film began. Oh, really? But I can't, I can't remember on YouTube, but, but I think on YouTube it has got the, it's not like the most amount of views ever on YouTube, but I think it's got the most amount of views uh, for the Unplugged show, because I think the Unplugged show did a lot of different artists, but that's the one that's got the most views. I'm sure that's what I read anyway, by the by. Okay, so this film that we have turned up to watch is a period drama set in the 1870s about a swordish soldier who pursues a doomed romance with a widowed bloodish farmer during the conquest of Berger. Very topical, isn't it? <laughs> Good grief. Are you trying to incite more protests, Mr. Coo 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 Cheerbook? I clicked it twice by mistake. As the credits rolled... I made an early exit to use the men's room, as you do, as the president. I'll just sneak to the men's room before all the fiore happens. And as I was washing my hands in the sink, health and safety and all that, you know, uh, what's not high, health, hygiene, I heard an unmistakable voice behind me. So, what did you think? We turn around, trying not to look horror-struck. Or shocked, maybe. Because clearly we've been briefed about your attendance at this premiere. Even Sergei's failed us now. <laughs> oh no. Tarquin Sol leaned on his cane. Is that zipper up? He had the same frail appearance I had noticed at the assembly meeting, yet up close I could still sense the raw magnetism that had kept him in power for twenty years. I am happy that the plight of the Bloodish might finally get the attention it deserves. Be careful where you extend your sympathies, President Rain. I'm surprised to see you're still around, sir. We'll uh, extend our courtesies. It's like when you're in the police. <clears throat> if, I don't know, your inspector or your superintendent, you know, that you've called sir for your entire working career, uh, suddenly retires and you meet up or c catch a glance of them outside work, you would, well, I don't, for me at least, uh, you would still call them sir, like my ex-sergeant. Uh, I saw him um, about four or five months ago. We were in a shop, my, my mate's local shop, and uh, he was there. I was like, oh my God, I went, oh, Sarge, how are you doing? <laughs> he's retired, I've left, he's not a sergeant anymore, but he's out of respect, you know, the rank that he attained, and the same thing. So yeah, well, yeah, sir, you, you've obviously earned your, your titles in the past. What are you doing at the assembly? Hmm. 
my country was about to make a rash decision. I couldn't simply sit by. Ah. <laughs> this is almost like tea. This is almost like uh, winding him up at this point. <laughs> Courtesies have now gone out the window. Uh, and are you pleased with the outcome? Saul fixed me with a piercing stare. His back straightened. Perhaps my clout with the assembly isn't what it used to be, but you may yet encounter difficulties pushing your reforms through the Supreme Court. <laughs> your cronies can't help you. Let's not antagonize him. Um. Why, may I ask, do you want these reforms blocked so badly? I will not let you and that bleeding heart idiot, Victor, tarnish my precious constitution. Your constitution is ancient history. My reforms will bring Swordland to the future. Ha! Some of his spittle landed on my cheek. <coughs> if Swordland remains in your hands, the only future I see is anarchy. I've heard some people call your constitution dusty, sir. Yes. <laughs> you had a chance to lead, and everyone saw what a mess you made of it in the end. I mean, he didn't do too badly to start with, I mean, but he's making us angry, and this is the best option of the lot. I've known it since you opposed me all those years ago. You spineless, backstabbing weasel. History will show who's what, Colonel. I stormed past him and out the door. Ooh. The presidential standoff. Oh. Saul's security staff and mine were now clustered outside the washroom, forming a buffer against the large crowd that had gathered. That's Tarquin's Hall! I heard somebody scream. His guards closed around him and mine around me. By the time the chaos subsided, I was back in the car with my family and Sol was long gone. Uh, Sergey, a word please. <laughs> 13 news articles, what the hell? 13? You haven't, and look at all the briefings. Oh, this summer's gone horribly wrong somewhere here. Oh, Jesus wept, right, here we go. Let's plow our way through. Return to 10% EPA, a commendable decision. Not really. In a move that harks back to the sensible policies of the Sarkwinsol era, the president has reinstated 10% Energy Protection Act. This decision reflects a commitment to national sovereignty and the preservation of Swordland's economic independence. It's a commendable step that upholds the principles of self-determination and resists the encroachment of foreign influences on our national assets. Rain and Saul meet at cheerbook screening. Thank God knows no reporters in the damn toilet, eh? The recent exclusive screening of uh, Mr. Cheerbook's new film, The Morning Shall Come, was attended by an unexpected guest, former President Tarquin Saul, rarely seen outside of his home on Duro Island since his resignation. Current president, Anton Rain, was also in attendance and the two men were seen together. It's a good job. It's a, it's a minor miracle that fists weren't flying. <laughs> New law on the Swordish language vetoed. Of course it was. Of course it was. Goodbye and God bless not. EPA reversal, a necessary step. That's two papers in favour of the reversal. Hmm. 
I must have, I don't think it is, but hey, we were, our hands were tied. Okay, it's gone down well with Solan today. The Economist. Energy prices now fluctuating post EPA reversal. I mean, this could be the original, this could be the fluctuation before it steadies out again. <sighs> Short term volatility, not good. Gas on continues downsizing. This is because of the this is because of this whole situation. It's not good. Gasson declares bankruptcy following shake. Oh no. Oh no, them shares that we could have cashed out worth not 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 a penny now. Financial disaster. <gasps> oh. Holy cow, that's terrible. Oh, that's terrible. That's going to take some getting back from. Deary me. Right, okay. Let's see how um, let's see how Marcel spins this one. EPA reversal shakes up Swedish energy market. The recent reversal has sent shockwaves through Swedland's energy market. This abrupt policy change raises serious concerns about market predictability and stability. Even they can't spin it into a positive. <laughs> One film, two very special guests. The new film made a splash, but not for the content of the period drama itself. Instead, the film was overshadowed by two political figures in attendance. President Rain, who made the trip from Holsord with his family, and former President Tarquin Sol, barely seen on the mainland since 1949. It is rumoured the two of them spoke in the washroom following the film. And the radical... EPA reversal, a dangerous concentration of power. Yeah, it's nothing to do with me, radical. It wasn't my decision. Ah, well, I was, I was, I was coerced. Gaston's downsizing another blow to the workers. While the executives continue to enjoy hefty paychecks. <coughs> Washroom summit. What are Sol and Rain hiding? At the screening of Alfred Cherbuck's overblown sob story, The Morning Shall Come, President Anton Rain and former President Arkansas were seen exiting the men's room together. While an illicit assignation is not out of the question, it is far more likely the two inveterate politicians were making backroom deals about what, which the swordish public, as usual, will be kept in the dark. Backroom deals? Yeah, you, you think that, buddy. You couldn't be further from the truth. <laughs> the Radical is committed to getting to the bottom of this meeting. Uh, you, you, you continue to pry. Okay, Rain vetoes racist language bill. It's the least he could have done. Yeah, I do something good, it's expected. I do something bad, oh well, it's, uh, uh, we told you, didn't we? I hate this paper. In fact, I mean, none, yeah, some of these other papers still do paint things in a negative light, but not like, it, it don't, they don't feel like personal attacks. They're just like, you know, some of them are quite factual. Some of them could be a bit more positive. But this paper is definitely anti-me. 100% man. All the damn time. I'm going to burn that damn thing down to the ground. Right, let's have a look what's happening over here. Contan and Security Pact. Peace Armada sent to assist XEC. Combating piracy. Okay. Agnolia. Warns against Valgslandian threats to the seas. Tensions continue to rise. The nearest Republic of Derdia. We don't see much Derdia uh, news. Supreme Wise Man. Jorga Azmal has issued a special address on the sacred day of dissension, sending blessings to the global nearest community, including those in Swordland. He encouraged all to reflect on the teachings of nearity, and specifically Saint Ruach, and to uphold 
its principles in their daily lives. May God be with you all. ATO's IEC uncovers energy resources in Polaris. International Expedition Command. Groundbreaking presence in Polaris and covering a wealth of untapped energy resources. Send some our way. Oh, well, I can't because you're foreign. Team also encountered indigenous communities that had remained untouched by modern civilization. Wow. It's quite something. Right, that's the world news. Now about the local briefings. Gasom announces downsizing. Well that's, well, that's one way of putting it. I heard you were bankrupt. Sana. Massive raid against the... Oh, this is the new... This is the, uh, the intelligence at work now. Lilius Graf reported that security forces have successfully conducted a targeted raid against the BFF in Sana, aimed to apprehend key members of the organisation and dismantle its infrastructure. During the raid, a significant quantity of weapons, explosives and incriminating documents were seized, further substantiating the government's concerns regarding the organisation's activities. Several individuals suspected of involvement in terrorist activities were also arrested, and the information extracted to them point out to a possible future meeting of all the leaders of the BFF close to the Wesek, Sordish border. Lilius Graf portrayed the outcome as a significant blow to the BFF. Investigations are ongoing and additional measures will be taken to address any remaining threats posed by the organisation. Okay, so we've got two things here. This could be the last two of the session, but you know, we'll see what they are. Uh, first of all, there's this report. Uh, a bit of religious tensions here. Remain vigilant against the threat of Golcomdist extremists and potential violence targeting the dust nearest community. Okay. Ceremonial day for the day of dissension. Okay. Dinner with the family at home. Briefing on the diplomatic strategy. Right, what do we do? We'll do the briefings first, then we'll do the religious attendance. And then we'll do the dinner. Have we let him out of prison? No, he's not going anywhere. Uh, we haven't given him the option yet. <laughs> the doors to the White Room, like everything else in the Maroon Palace's main nerve centre, were painted white. What a shock. I took a deep breath before pushing them open. Time for yet another meeting. At least this time, it was with people who liked me. <laughs> oh, the President's getting the same vibe, is he? The attendees, what, Lanzaia? Mr. President, you're slightly mistaken here. Uh, the attendees rose up from their seats. <clears throat> Mr. President? Ayosef nodded, couldn't even be bothered to speak. He and Lucian sat down while David remained standing. Uh, now that you are here, let's talk about our diplomatic strategy. <clears throat> Mr. President, if I may, I would like to provide you with a short overview of where we are right now. Go ahead. Although we did not make a trade deal with Agnolia, we succeeded in making one with Valum, which means we have increased our presence in the region. These deals were important pieces of leverage and significant first steps into the global arena. We must now look towards the future. Go on. David sat down, pulled out a few papers and started going through them as he kept talking. Valen and Agnolia were practice runs. We must begin improving our relationship with greater nations. We need to elevate our international standing, especially with the threat of Rumberg looming. <coughs> Mr. President, you know me. I don't trust the helping hands of the countries offer us for a good reason. But I also know when those helping hands are necessary. And right now, we need all the help we can get. I've said this over and over, but I will repeat it until you get it through your skull. 
Excuse me? Rumberg will come sooner or later. And with the current state of our military, if a Rumberg invasion happens, Swordland will cease to exist. We need allies. Uh, we ought to heed General Lanceer's advice, Mr. President. I trust your assessment, Iosef, although not your tone. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, military perspective is important, but uh, these deals are about more than just gaining allies. We also need to consider the benefits to our economy. Such deals will provide. Yes, especially when we are still struggling to end the recession. David took a seat and brought out two stacks of documents. Uh, at the start of our term, I had a comprehensive trade deal plan laid out. Following the visits to Valen and Agnulia, we were to pursue potential trade deals with two greater nations. Valgsland is one of them. Now that would really take Agnulia off. If we can manage to get them onto the table, there is much more potential here than in Valen or Agnolia. Because they are one of the most important countries in CSP, a deal with Valmsland is a ticket to bring Swordland closer to the United Contanan Sphere. I'm assuming, David, you have a country that's closely tied with the AT... Oh? No, Arcasia, Arca sorry. Because <coughs> I'd rather go Arcasia route than CSP route, if I'm being honest. Although, technically speaking, uh, CSP are probably slightly more aligned with our policies I, in, in, the, in the main. Okay, could be dangerous. A simple trade deal wouldn't cause issues unless we decide to go further. Uh, moving on to Lesbia. Ah, Lesbia have much closer ties with Arcasia. Ah, to the south, of course, but they even moved, um, if I remember, military presence into Lesbia. Our southern neighbour is one of the wealthiest countries in eastern Macopa. A trade deal with them would be very beneficial, not just for our economy, but also for our regional and international presence. Not to mention that they are in the Acasian sphere. I'm leaning towards Lesbia for two reasons. One, because I prefer... Uh, don't ask me bloody why, but... Uh, Arcasia. I mean, we, we got some personal wealth out of their, out of their, uh, of their country's walkie-talkies. Um, but also because I think... Ally with Valsland, with the whole situation going on with that, with with Agnolia, which is our neighbour, um, the, the fighting over the over the island. I don't want to be drawn into that. So I'm thinking Lesbia. They're rich, good trade, and as a bonus, if we can, you know, get some Arcasian support, it's better than nothing. Yeah. Trade deal with Lesbia could open a few doors. Uh, true, a country as influential as Lesbia could help elevate our economy. That is it for the overview. To the actual contents of the trade deal, uh, Lucian. Lucian pulled out his small notebook and quickly flipped through the pages until he landed on the right one. Looking at my stats here, <clears throat> we now have a small tungsten surplus, which makes an excellent resource for trade, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. I need to know your decision before we can proceed. What should we do? <clears throat> before you say anything, remember what I said. We need allies, not just a trade deal. If Rumberg attacks, we will fall. <laughs> Both of them? No, no that's, that's probably a little bit too conflicting. Uh, 
I'm leaning towards Lesbia. <coughs> Keeps us out of the situation with our neighbour. Nice and rich, apparently, to the south. Both could be... <sighs> There's got to be a conflict there, surely. I mean, who says we can't get both? And if the talks with one fail, then we can get the second. Good way of looking at it. It's just negotiations as well, isn't it? We're not committing to... It's negotiating with both. Yeah. Both. See what's on the table from both. And then make an informed decision. Off you go, David. You're going to be very busy. I want negotiations open with both of them. Excellent news. I will begin at once. That was all I had for today. Thank you for coming. I don't think you can. I don't think we're able to select both. I think it's not possible. It would make no sense. But negotiating with both, seeing what's on the table, making a decision probably is the option here. Thank you, gentlemen. I also saluted as we left the white room. Okay. Assignment started. Lesbia, Valgsland, starting. Oh, the growth line has gone po has gone slightly positive here, folks. This is good news. This is good news indeed. I didn't know you could move the map around with the right clicky. I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know you could move it with the clicky. Anyway. Isolated polio cases seen in Bergia. Several villages in Bergia have been safely placed under quarantine after a few polio cases were diagnosed in the region. Swaja confirmed to Valen, little chance of further infections incurring. Paralysis is only seen in a minute percentage of cases, and there's no need to alter the soldier's way of life. Vaccination program is going to prevent the spread, let's hope so. <laughs> whereas, whereas the Shaven Time says, Polio cases are exploding in uh, Bergia. Concerning news. Well, what is it? Is it news not worth worrying about, or is it worth worrying about? Rain will visit both Valsland and Lespia for trade deal. <clears throat> so, unclear what the goals of these trade talks will be, although some insiders speculate that Rain is hoping to gather allies in anticipation of an eventual confrontation with Rumberg. It will be hard to negotiate with both Valkland and Lesbia simultaneously without choosing sides between either Arcasia or the United Contana. So, vaccinations. Don't go there, man. Gelsord, read the report. Recession hits the workers. Yeah, about that. Avery. Ooh, development speeds up following the highway construction. Decreased log logistical costs, higher traffic flow, pace of development has quickened significantly. Dozens of construction projects now on the horizon. Let's click, click into this area now. Look at that increased business and trade. Laren. Decreasing poverty. We'll, we'll gloss over the negative ones. <laughs> Uh, increased business and trade. Look at that. Lovely. And are we getting these farms built? Agricultural zone. Under construction. Hopefully, it'll be hopefully our reign will be remembered for some good things. Not, I'm sure we've done. I think we've done some some good stuff. I think we've done our best. It could have gone worse. It's not finished yet, but it, it could have already gone worse than it has. Come on. Valen trade report. It continues to bear fruit as Burgess sees upward trend in agricultural exports. Decreased production costs. Nice. Right, ceremonial duty. <clears throat> Presidential uh, attendance required, apparently. Right, morning haze surrounded the city of Dare. As the sun dawned on the day of dissension, the holiest day of the Nurity religion, it celebrated the first message received from God by Saint Dast and his thirty disciples. 
As per tradition, the celebration was held inside the Ark Sanctuary of Dast Nurity, closed to the public eye. This year, however, for the first time ever, it was going to be televised. There you go, Umbrister. Bloody hell, we have got television and televised things. My God. Thank God it wasn't in the, the assembly. That was Lucian's idea. Oh, good job, Lucian. As he saw it, granting the people a rare glimpse of the grand ceremony and showing them how seriously their president took this holy event would ease any tensions that lingered in the region. And so we arrived at the largest cathedral in Swordland. A huge crowd gathered around our convoy as our car pulled up to the entrance. This will work out well, trust me, sir. Of course, that's only if the prayer is done completely correctly. Please don't forget the order. Guys, please don't forget the order. First, you will need to grasp the Holy Scepter with your left hand, then touch the altar with your right. Kneel before the Archpriest and wait for him to put the sword on your shoulder. Scepter in left, altar with right, Kneel, sword and shoulder. Okay, I think I've got it. Oh, for God's sake. Then touch the sword with the hand you touched the altar with. Makes sense, free hand. Hand the scepter over to the archpriest. And then receive the sword before passing it to any side. Like a bloody... Goodness me, can't we just bow, touch, touch, kiss a ring, something easy? A, a, a scepter, a thingy, a shoulder, a shoulder, a hand on the sh thingy, hand it back, take it down, flip it round, and woo! We shouldn't be mocking, this is a religious festival. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? Uh, yeah. What can possibly go wrong? I'm the president in my traditional maroon coloured suit. My hat. Nobody's ever seen me wear any other clothing in public, for heaven's sake. You know, president's here. Oh, and we're on television for the first time. What could possibly go? I'm going to drop the scepter, smash it to bits, fumble around. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> Yes, yes, sure, I've got it under control. I negotiated the assembly at that most tumultuous of times. I'm sure a religious ritual should be should be a piece of cake, Lucian. <laughs> Very good. You are first. You will have to go first. I will come inside later and we will meet up after your part is done. Good luck, sir. I said the car and was greeted by a chorus of cheers and camera flashes. I waved to the people. I did it without him reading it. Of course I'm going to wave. That's what I do. And meanwhile, I'm getting right into this. Uh, maybe after I finish playing this game, I might uh, put myself down to become an MP. How about that? My first step to becoming uh, Prime Minister, uh, Demo. I'm sure you'll all vote for me, right? Yes, I've had, I've had practice. Honestly. Uh, to the Grand Gates. The Ark Sanctuary was a sight to see. With its towering visage, it cast a shadow over a large portion of the city. I had to crane my neck to see the narrow spires at the top. Just standing next to it made me feel awe and dread in equal measure. As I reached the gates, I spotted my welcoming committee. The Archpriest and his disciples were waiting for my arrival. At my approach, they all bowed their heads in respect. The Archpriest gave me an infectious smile as he straightened back up. Tall and handsome, in his mid-fifties, he was one of the youngest and most popular Archpriests in history. Some of his more avid followers even likened him to Saint Dast. Mr. President, praise God! It is a blessing to see you on our most holy day again. Welcome, welcome. Bow our heads, of course. Which triggered a few murmurs of approval from the crowd. The crowd was still cheering loudly. The Archpriest turned and raised both of his hands and everybody immediately fell silent. Oh, great 
people of Swordland, once again we are gathered here to honour the day of dissension. I am indescribably happy to be sharing this moment with you as well as every blued and sword, old and young, tuning in to their television to watch this holy commemoration. Along with the leader of our great nation, I say, let the holy day begin. Stay far from evil, O oh sons and daughters, for evil hides itself under many disguises. Disguises such as blasphemy, apostasy, and even alcohol. Where's Peter? Be good, my children. Praise God. Praise Swordland. He smiled beatifically as the crowd burst into rapturous applause. After it subdued, he turned to me. Oh God, here we go. Shall we move inside for your confession? Confession? Confession. Pull the priest aside for a photo. Uh, confession? Exactly, that was my first reaction. Confession? My confession? Yes, just like last year. Every man must confess before the holy ceremony starts. He led me through the main hall, which had a stratospheric ceiling and nearest icons lining the walls. He, we walked up a creaking spiral staircase to the top floor and finally arrived in front of the confession chamber. Right this way. He gestured towards a chair in the dark room. The room smelled of old mahogany and scented candles. The archpriest proceeded to light each and every one of the candles, one for each virtue and vice. I will be right with you. He left the room. A minute later, I heard the sound of a sliding window right next to me. He spoke with a very soft voice. <clears throat> Anton Rain, speak, speak and confess now before the one God, and may he repent your sins on the most holy day of dissension. I confess nothing. I haven't sinned. I ha have I sinned? I'm not sure what I am doing for Swordland is enough. That's probably true, actually. We're trying our hardest, but is it enough? I've been a bad husband? Nah. We've involved in shady dealings? What shady dealings? Political dealings aren't shady. It's for the good of the country. We we've got to confess. We've got to confess something. He's not going to believe us. We haven't sinned. Really? I confess, Father, that I am not sure, <laughs> they're the most shady, Shh. that what I'm doing for Swordland is enough. I try and try, I'm, I'm trying so hard, but there's only so much I seem to be able to do. do carry a heavy burden on your shoulders. What you have confessed is not a sin, but you may share your burden with me if you like. Oh, I don't like either of these options. Oh, God. Maybe the country isn't ready for it. The country is ready for it. It's, the, it's my flipping party that's not ready for it. So I'll just continue to... I still don't know if I'm doing the right thing. I do know I'm doing the right thing, but I just... Yeah. Hi, uh, Holler, welcome. Absolute certainty only belongs to God. All else feels uncertainty many times in their lives. This is especially true for men of power. Anything else you would like to confess? Uh, that's all for today, Father. Uh, yes. <laughs> Before God, I thank you for sharing. You are now forgiven before God, Anton Rain. May you never sin again. <laughs> Sliding window closed and the archpriest entered the confession chamber. For the confession to end, you must extinguish the candles uh, representing each one of your virtues and vices. 
With this, the once burning sins connected to you are now smoke and then nothing. And we extinguish the candles, one by one. Well done, Mr. President. Let's move on to my quarters before the ceremony. He led me through the thousand-year-old corridors to his office. The smell of dust and old tomes was in the air, along with the scent of burning incense being prepared for the ceremony. Well then, please have a seat. The wooden chair next to him looked like it might turn to dust at a single touch. I sat down gingerly. It was surprisingly sturdy. Are you ready for the ceremony? Absolutely. We say with confidence. Is that a sin? <laughs> Fake confidence here? Very good to hear. He leaned back in his chair comfortably. I wanted to give you something, a gift to celebrate this special day. He pulled out a large rectangular box from his desk drawer. The box was lined with gold and expensive gemstones. Ah, a beautiful sight, isn't it? He opened the box and showed me what was inside. It was a dagger. The handle looked like it was made of pure gold and had a very large gem at the end. On the blade, the words were inscribed, Vecton Sista. Victory is close. On the other side, another set of words. King Egmund. This dagger belonged to King Edmund. It is a very important artifact of the Kingdom of Swordland era. It is now yours, Mr. President. Oh, well, of course we can accept it. Well, yes, precious relic here. I thank you very much, Father. It is an honour to receive such a, such a gift. Think of the past and think of who we are. Traditions are what brought us to this point. Now then, it should be right about time. A couple of knocks were heard on the door and a young boy came in. He bowed before the archpriest and then me, before letting us know that the ceremony was about to begin. We made our way downstairs where the ceremony was already in progress. The choir sang angelically as the archpriest took his position beside the altar. When they finished their hymn, an expectant silence fell over the room. It was time for my part. I started my walk, bowed and approached the altar. Grab the scepter with your left hand and then touch the altar with our right. Got that bit? Kneel before the archpriest. You kneel down. The archpriest lay the sword on my shoulder. Touch the sword. With my right hand, free hand. Oh. I, I want to do it without looking, you see. And the scepter to the archpriest, and then the sword to the disciples, right? I'm not going to cheat. I'm going to have to remember it. I was told to remember it, so I have to remember it. Hand the scepter to the archpriest. I waited for him to give me the sword. He handed me the sword, and I passed the sword to the disciple. I think I got it. I think I got it. I got up and proceeded to my designated seat next to Lucian. He leaned over and whispered in my ear. Compared to last year, that went surprisingly well, sir. Hey! I got an achievement for that. My eyes met the archpriest's and he s very slightly nodded. Hey! The ceremony went on for another hour and a half. Whoa! <laughs> Finally, the noon bells chimed, marking the end of the cathedral service. We left the cathedral to greet the waiting crowd. As I stepped outside, I heard everyone cheering and chanting my name. Oh my God! Whoa. Oh, probably almost like after all the hardships we've endured over the past week or two. Uh, well, you know, week at least, actually. Uh, probably quite overwhelming. Oh, good grief. 
Lucian's gambit seemed to have been a success. We waved proudly for a minute or two. Not everyone hates my flipping guts. See, sir? I told you it wouldn't work. We entered our cars and drove back out uh, to our suites in Dare. Oh, well, that's a go. King Eggman's Dagger. So here's a collection of items that we've got. We've got ceremonial scissors. Cut ribbons. Oh, this must be for the opening of the highway. And now we've got King Edmund's Dagger. Look at that. We can spin it around and stuff. A, re a reminder of the weight of leadership. It's more than a weapon. It's a piece of swordish history. We've also got the... Uh, what else we got? In our collection. Not many things. Clearly we're not an avid, avid collector of, I, of, of useless artifacts. <laughs> How do we get out of here? Right, it's uh, 20 past 7. Which means uh, as much as I would love to continue to my family meal. Uh, I've probably got to... Uh, the Arcasian Lyra. Oh dear. I'll have one quick last look at this newspaper. What is it? Okay. As part of the grand ceremony, the Day of Dissension has begun with festivities in Deer. President Rain, who was in attendance with His Holiness, the Archbishop, who together performed a sacred ritual. The momentous occasion was celebrated by everyone, regardless of their rank and status. Swordland has once again felt unity amidst chaos to come together. Forget, forgot their differences and celebrated the word of God. And on that positive note, I think we should end the session before something goes horribly wrong. Where's Deirdre? What are they saying? Blessings, blessings. Deep appreciation for President Rain's successful conduct on the Day of Dissension rituals. He congratulated the President on his performance and sent blessings on behalf of the nearest Republic of Deirdre. Look at that. Oh. We are doing good things here, people. We are doing good things. Right, last briefing. Currency loses value against Arcasian Lyra. Slipping. Still not reached the all-time low. That's, that's good to know. It's bad, but it's not as bad as it could be. Right, okay, we've got a family dinner, which obviously we have not got time to attend because it could go for at least 10 minutes, so I need to really get cracking because I've got stuff to do. Uh, get changed for football, pretty much, that's about it. But, uh, yeah, there we go, folks. Whew. I think that was a, quite a successful session. I can't remember the call and thinking anything that went too badly wrong there, but we're just it's like the calm before the storm. We've got to talk with the um, Supreme Court judges next that's our next big thing we've got the negotiations with the, the two countries coming up <sighs> tumultuous times ahead right tomorrow is another it's wednesday i haven't put my name down for football but it sounds like they're struggling for players so watch this space if i don't be, if i'm not playing football as i said uh, yesterday i'll be playing uh, Baldur's gate three if i am playing football um well I'll have to do another pre-football stream, maybe, or maybe just have a day off, because I've got Thursday to do a football stream with as well. But I'll keep you posted on the Discord <coughs> of what's happening over the next couple of days in terms of streams. But enjoy the rest of your evenings, your afternoons, wherever you are. Thanks for joining me uh, this evening and taking part as usual. And I uh, hope you enjoyed. Until next time, have a good one. I'll see you soon. <laughs>